Money Arata. The small island of Yap uses stone wheels as money. These wheels, uh, the stones, they range from 3 centimeters to 4 meters in diameter. With the name of Fei, these giant stone coins are used even without being exchanged, and they maintain their value even at the bottom of the sea, and they teach us what real money is. And what's more, this stone money has, has been used for centuries, has the same basic characteristics as Bitcoin. Both are scarce, difficult to produce, publicly traded, and they function without a central authority deciding to inflate the currency, reduce the purchasing power, or decide what you can do with your money. Please note, this is not a financial advice. Read the full disclaimer before proceeding. Stone money shows how money is actually much more than banknotes or coins. In Oceania, there is a nation called the Federated States of Micronesia with more than 600 islands. A group of these islands form the state of Yap, where around 11,000 people live today. On these islands is one of the most interesting stories for us to understand what money is. At the beginning of the 20th century, the island of Yap used limestone wheels called Fei as money. These stone wheels were publicly displayed and their size dependent on the size, the fineness of grain and the whiteness of the stone. In 1903, when the island had some 6,000 inhabitants, an anthropologist named William Furness went to do some research on Yap and he became fascinated with the Fei. After some time on the island, he published a book called The Island of Stone Money that tells us how those giant stone wheels were used as money. But what impressed William Furness the most was that a person didn't need to actually hold one of these giant stone wheels to say that the money was theirs. For the most part, whenever a business transaction, a deal would take place, the debt that was assumed would usually cancel each other out and whatever was pending was carried forward in anticipation for some future transaction. But sometimes there was actually some real exchange of faith. In those cases, if people made a deal that was too high of a value for a big faith to be transported, the new owner was happy just to accept the mere acknowledgement of the ownership of the faith. It was not even necessary to write the name of the new owner on the stone. The stone was still there in the very same location, uh, the previous owner's premises, but now everyone in the island knew that that stone had a new owner. This trust was so great that was even a very wealthy family on that island that had never laid hands on the material representation of the wealth. The reason is that that wealth came from a huge fay that about two or three generations ago was at the bottom of the ocean because it had sunk along with a ship that was doing the transportation during a storm. Now, you must find all of that very, very strange. But the people of Yap must also find it pretty strange that a person here believes that he is rich because he has 10 million in a bank instead of having that money kept at home. The 10 million in a bank, in this case, is displayed in the form of numbers that appear digitally in the internet banking app. And even those who have all this value, for example, in the form of paper bills at home, well, it will also be necessary to understand that there is a big abstraction in considering that those colored pieces of paper actually represent some value. Hmm? The island of stone money reveals how ideas about money are much more philosophical than we think. The book on the stone money island ended up in the hands of a young economist named John Maynard Keynes. You may have heard the name of Keynes by now because he was one of the most well-known economists in the world. And at that time, he was still a beginner in his career and he received the mission of doing a review of that book for a newspaper in England. So Keynes wrote that uh, Yap's stone money brought us into contact with a group of people whose ideas about money are probably much more philosophical ideas than the ideas of any other country. And this is because Yap's monetary system makes it very clear that money is not just a medium of exchange, something that is chosen by a society to be universally accepted and facilitate negotiations, facilitate barter. Well, 
in the case of uh, the stone island, you see that moving those stones, especially the big ones, was even much more difficult than moving the products that were being traded. Yap's economy only had staples like fish and coconut and seafood. And even in an economy so simple like uh, Yap's economy, didn't work on the basis of pure barter. Actually, historians have never been able to actually find evidence of uh, any specific economy that operated solely on the basis of barter. They were not intended to be a universally accepted commodity to facilitate barter, as most of the time they were not even physically exchanged. So these stones weren't exactly a medium of exchange. So Yap's money was actually not really the fey, the stones, but the system behind the fey. The value was in the credit and clearing account system. The fey was just a tool to help them to maintain some level of control. The stone wheels were just symbols with which these credit and clearing accounts were being recorded. In other words, the use of fey shows in practice that money is actually a system of credits and compensation, and that coins, be it made of stone or metal or even computer bits, they're just representations of the money that help to control these accounts. Money and currency are not the same thing. Currency is just a useful symbol for recording credits and offsets. Now let's imagine a practical example. Imagine the inhabitants of Yap trading fish, and coconuts, and seafood. In these uh, deals, these businesses that they were doing, they accumulate credit whenever they sell a product. And they also accumulate that when they buy a product, right? To settle payments, these credits and that, they offset each other. Any pending issue can be settled by exchanging a currency in the amount that covers the pending amount, the pending issue. Now, this doesn't happen just with stone money. Any currency is just a useful symbol in registering the credit account system and implementing the clearing process. But currency is not money per se. Money is the credit and clearing account system that is represented by currency. This is now quite clear as today's metal banknotes and coins are nothing more than symbols. There is no corresponding value in gold or any other precious metal that is held in a bank. The metal bills and coins that you have in your wallet today, they're only valuable because there is a law that says you must accept it in the country where you live. And most of those coins, by the way, they don't even exist physically. In the United States, for example, more than 90% of the money in circulation exists only in the form of computer bits, information being carried electronically back and forth, recording credits and offsets between the people who buy and sell products and services. Stone money helped the understanding of interventionists and liberals. If you have seen our episode on the different schools of economics, you may remember that John Maynard Keynes advocated greater state intervention in the economy. So you might be thinking that this idea of money being used in this uh, YAP monetary system is something only used by the interventionists. But the truth is that the Fay were also validated by liberals. In 1991, Milton Friedman, who was one of the great names of liberalism, he also read the book The Island of Stone Money, and he also validated the idea that money is not a commodity. Money is a system of credits and compensations. In an article he wrote about the island of Yap, Friedman even mocked the idea that our so-called civilized world digs up metals from the deep ground, refines those metals, transports these metals for long distances and then bury everything again in the form of coins or bars and sophisticated vaults in the basement of a bank. That is, see, both the interventionist Keynes and the liberal Friedman, both of them praised the idea of money as a special kind of credit, a monetary exchange as the compensation of those credits, and coins as mere symbols of a relationship of credits and compensations. Liberal ideas, especially monetary freedom, are also behind another innovation in the world of money, Bitcoin. And Yap's stone money also helps us to understand Bitcoin. Yap's stone money and Bitcoin digital currency are more alike than you might think. Bitcoin software was programmed to have the amount of new currency units being issued produced for about every around four years 
approximately. Thus, the first bitcoins they were produced in greater volume than the last bitcoins will be. And we know that those last bitcoins will be that the software is programmed to issue uh, no more than 21 million bitcoins. This program difficulty and scarcity are purposeful. Using the law of supply and demand, whomever created bitcoin knew that for a good to be valued, it needs to be scarce and difficult to obtain. It is for this reason, by the way, that gold and silver are widely used uh, from the beginning of the history of mankind as coins. As they were rare metals, they were difficult to obtain, and they were increasingly scarce. The inhabitants on the island of Yap also knew this, but they didn't have natural precious metals in their soil. But they also couldn't be choosing anything to serve as currency because they knew that for a currency to be good, it can't be used to be produced. It would be too plentiful and it would end up being devalued. And this explains the Fey being large, with a difficult circular cut, with a hole in the middle, and mainly they were made with this very specific stone, the limestone, that could only be obtained in the neighboring island of Palau. Whenever some foreigner tried to manipulate the system, the islanders rejected that money. For example, as they had this uh, very pure limestone color, they, they were more white and they were more valued. So some Germans tried to paint some stones with white paint to increase the value, and that was rejected. Another example was when Americans used uh, some dynamite, some explosives, to facilitate the production of fey. In both cases, the majority of the community rejected those fey, and they, you know, they were produced too easily. It, it was almost like cheating or counterfeit money. The difficulty of producing new fey was important, so the existing amount of stones on the island was always greater than the production of new stones in a given period. Thus, the stones had a high stock-to-flow ratio. We already talked about the stock-to-flow ratio in the episode number 9 of the Money Arata series. To make a, a very short summary, the high stock-to-flow ratio means that there is less supply of a good entering the market than is already stocked, that already exists being held uh, about that same good in the same market. Fay and Bitcoins, like gold, they have a high stock-to-flow ratio because it is not possible to easily produce more of those goods. On the other hand, fiat money can be created in a snap. The government can simply decide to print more money on the mint, devaluing the money that you took years of effort to amass. In addition, the Fay were displayed in a place where everyone on the island could see, when someone on the island needed to transfer the ownership to another inhabitant, well, that person would simply announce orally to everyone that now that stone belonged to so-and-so. There was no central authority to say which fey was whose. If anyone tried to appropriate someone else's fey, the entire community actually knew whose stone wheel it was. That's why even a stone that was at the bottom of the sea was still recognized, as there were witnesses to what happened. And they knew that that stone really existed, and it was the ownership of a particular family. This is the same as having a public ledger, a transparent database of transactions, just like the blockchain or the time chain does with Bitcoin. Fay and Bitcoin are more similar than you might think. Both stone money and digital money are limited, difficult to produce, they rely on a public ledger, and they function without a central authority. In both systems, the people are the bank itself, and the community is the authority, with no need for an overly powerful central body that will have the chance to be manipulating the currency. And what does that even matter to you? It's that without a central authority to issue more and more currency as they want, you free yourself from the oppression of politicians who are deliberately devaluing the money that you have worked so hard to gather. You become the owner of your own money. You can do with that whatever you want without having to rely on anybody else to be controlling or devaluing your assets. The island of stone money shows how money is not the same as currency and that coins are just a useful symbol for recording credits and offsets. Even in a simple and ancient economy like Yap's, we can clearly see the fundamentals of money as a system of credits and offsets. And these same fundamentals help us to see Bitcoin as money, but not just any money. 
but money that is controlled by the very people who use that money. And that's why Bitcoin has solid foundations to establish itself as the future of money. And if you don't want to be left out of this future, which is increasingly present, it is now time for you to learn more about Bitcoin. And that is why I invite you now to get to know the new training of Arata Academy, Diamond Hands. And you can see Diamond Hands right now by visiting arata.se forward slash diamond hands.